Merry Christmas and welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. Today is Christmas Day 2021. And I want to talk about some Christmases I spent in the 70s, not only in the gay bars, but Christmases that I spent in the bathhouse looking for the man of my dreams. Yes, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. And we all have been there. You know what it is. It's Christmas Day. People's with the family. I wasn't with mine. I was living alone in my very first apartment. Um, the man who I thought was the man I wanted was, well, you know where he was. He was with his girlfriend on Christmas morning with her. He couldn't be with me. And that's the lonely part I don't say lonely part, but to me that's the stupid part of being a gay man fooling around with so-called DL men, um, men in the closet or married men. Because when holidays come, they do not spend time with you. They spend time with whoever they planning to be with. A DL guy is going to spend time with his girlfriend or family. And a married man is definitely going to spend time with his family and his wife. I can spend time with you. Sad part is you wake up Christmas morning and you realize all you are to them is a piece, is, is a dick or an ass. Other things, you're not, you're not part of their life. When they get horny on a regular day and they want to, you know what, you're the one they're going to go to because you're the steady piece of trade that they got. If you're not there, they'll just get somebody else. So Christmas morning, I don't know which Christmas it was. I know it was in the 70s. I think it was 1975. I had my very first apartment. It was Christmas morning and I was so depressed. I wanted to be with a man, the man of my dreams. And where did I go? I go to the bathhouse. Why not? I think at that time, the gay bars, I think the gay bars didn't open up too late. But it's Christmas morning. So, there were many bad houses that I've gone to. And I made a list of them. And I even went online. I Google The bad houses back in the 70s, the most famous ones, that's all they talk about, is the Continental Bath, which I've never been to the Continental Bath. And the St. Mark's Bath. Now, I've been to the St. Mark's Bath once. It's on St. Mark's Avenue in East Village. I've been there once. I didn't like it. And... I didn't read all the stuff they had on Google. People were talking about these bathhouses. But being black, going to bathhouses wasn't really, you know. I mean, you had to go to certain bathhouses that you know that white guys want to be with black guys, you know. St. Mark's, I don't know if St. Mark's was one of them. I know, see, you got to understand, not only being black and, and 400 pounds, not many not many guys get in a gay community back then anyway, wanted you. I mean, you was like like uh, like the plague. I mean, they would I mean, you go into the bathhouse and God forbid, they, you like the plague. The only time that you may score at a bathhouse is, is if there happened to be some strange guy who likes somebody of your size. Yeah, then you otherwise no. Back in those days, I don't care. I don't care what nobody said. Back in those days, um, the only I've heard this from so many white boys back then. If if you're black and you ain't got a big dick, they don't want nothing to do with you. So that that left me out. And then if you don't have muscles and all that other crap, they don't want you either. So I very rarely I scored in bad houses, but I, you know. So anyway, I just want to talk some about the bad houses that I went through. 
And I got here my, my list of things. The very first bathhouse I went to, I don't know the name of it, but it was in the 50s. It was in the West 50s, not far from Times Square. Why I went there, I'm not sure. And knowing I was in, what, 21, 22, I probably went there because somebody must have said to me in my travels that that's where, if you're black, that's where to go to score. So I went there. And she was shooting, I get in there, and lo and behold, who do I run into? I run into somebody that I went to junior high school with. And he was actually the very, oh my God, he was, he was the very first guy I ever had sex with. I forgot his name, we're talking about in the 70s now, I forgot his name. And um, we scored, of course, but it was, again, when we had sex back in junior high school, he had a girlfriend. And I didn't know how that happened. That happened on the train tracks. We lived in East New York. Not far from the uh, the LL line when it becomes elevated, and you go on the train tracks, and that's where we went up up there outside on the train tracks, and that's how we fooled around. And that was in junior high school, and he had a girlfriend at that time. So you know what happened? Here it is. What I forgot. 1975, maybe five years later. I think he married the girl. Why was he there at the bed house? Oh, I don't know. But he had a, he had a wife and everything. So we scored twice, and both times he had. A female. That was the first bathhouse I went to. Now, the next bathhouse is, I can't put them in order, but I will say another bathhouse that I, I went to. And I heard, I only went to this bathhouse once. I heard about it. And I don't know what year it was. It definitely was in the 70s. And I heard about it. And for my, I, I, you know, it was on 57th Street. Now, I thought sure it wasn't from the Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan Opera House. It was not far from the Opera House. It was a Metropolitan or New York City Opera House. It wasn't far from there. And there was a bathhouse. And they didn't call it, they didn't call it a bathhouse. I think they called it a Russian tea room. I think that's what they call it. It's on 57th Street, a Russian tea room. Oh, and I also have to mention between that one, that bathhouse and the one that I went to, I said for the first time, had a lot of... Uh, uh, what you call it, Taurus. But that was the that was a very famous area. And um, these people come out of town, they heard about these bathhouses. So both bathhouses was full of people, guys from out of town. Of course, they were all white. So anyway, my next bathhouse that I have here on my list, um, I ha okay, I have the St. Mark's Bath. Now, I think I, I said to you, you go and you see the Continental Bath. I, I went to the St. Mark's Bath. I didn't like it. It wasn't far from the Electric Circus. I remember the Electric Circus. I went to the Electric Circus once. And I went to St. Mark's Bath once. Of course, nobody wanted me. And maybe that's why I didn't like it. I didn't like it. That was on St. Mark's. Is it St. Mark's Street or St. Mark's Avenue? East Village. Um, the other bathhouse I went to. I have I have here the barracks. Now the barracks is on 42nd Street, for as I remember. It's on 42nd Street, and I've been there more than once. The barracks have been there more than, more than once. And the last time, the last I did score at the barracks. Now this is my what I'm about to tell you is is, is my history with these bathhouses and these bars. I met a guy. I think he was West Indian. Doesn't matter, right? But um, he ripped me off. How he ripped me off? That was my fault. That was I was young, so I learned. I had I learned by experience. I think I, I rented one of those cubicle, those rooms, what they call. I rented one of those, and I had left my wallet on top of the uh, little desk there. Don't ask me why I did that. I guess because I was taking my I took my clothes off. He took his clothes off. We fooled around. He left, and when he left, he left with my wallet. Okay, now I don't know how I do know how I got home. I think that's when I panhandled for the first time in my life on eighth. Uh, what was it? Seventh uh, Avenue, Times Square Station. I stood there outside and begging people for you know coffee to get home. Go, well, I know once I got home, I could get money for my sisters, you know. And I think that was the first time I panhandled. I panhandled just to get home. Hmm. 
And that was the barracks. Now, I have another bad house here that I, I did go to. Um, they're not in order, by the way. So this, just so you know, they're not in order. The Everards, which was another famous bad house they went. Now, the Everards, I went... I only went there when I was working on Wall Street. I went there with um, somebody, uh, one of my friends that I worked with, uh, Robert, and his friend Tom. We went to the Everards, and I didn't like that either. They scored. I mean, we got there. I think they had a little area where you could meet guys. You know, I think there was a TV, the lobby, I guess it was. Well, you knew, so everybody's knew. You go in there, that the TV's there. You could sit there watch TV. And I think they did have a little thing for drinks. I'm not sure. Anyway, Robert gets taken. Tom gets taken. I'm just sitting there, sitting there. And people just passing me. Guys just passing me by. So I, I left and went home. I didn't like that one either. That one only went to Everest once. The other one I had here was very interesting. The Northern Men's Sauna. Now, the Northern Men's Sauna. I went there. Now... To be honest with you, the Northern Men's Sauna, I went there um, not in the 70s. The only reason I'm bringing this up because I went in the Northern Men's Sauna. Oh, yeah, I take that back. Northern Men's Sauna, I didn't go in the 70s. I went in the 90s. I went there in the 90s, I remember. Now, I, if you hear my story, I had gotten sober in 1984. So I very rarely went to any bars or whatever because of my sobriety. But, you know, I remember in the 90s, I got very horny and I heard so much. I have a friend who frequent that, two, I had two friends who frequent, this, and they both was, was, was uh, what you call it, clean and dry. And they went to the sauna, when, when you get horny, they claimed that, well, I think, uh, and both guys like black men. So... I went there because I heard so much between those two of them scoring and carrying on in the Northern Men's Sauna, which was on Northern Boulevard in Queens, New York. I went there and yes, I did meet somebody. His name was Tony. Now, we talking about men of my dreams. Tony was, he worked out. He was black. He worked out five days a week. Um... Don't ask me why we didn't score there. He came to my house. Don't ask me why we didn't have we didn't have sex. There. He came he came to my house, and um, I lived in the Bronx. He lived in Queens. He came. He had a car. He drove to my house, and I'm gonna be honest with you. He was good looking. He was hot. He was hung. Great body, muscular, everything, and the sex was horrible. Why the sex was horrible? I mean, we was getting down. I mean, we really was getting down, kissing and carrying on. And I thought I he, I thought I was going to get so excited. Now, meanwhile, we didn't even get into the act of having sex. Just to kissing and hugging and feeling all those muscles. I thought that I was going to, you know, shoot my load. And I said, no, I, and I said, stop. I, I'm going to come. I'm going to come. And he stopped and he said, I don't care if you're going to come. It ain't about you. It's about me coming. And then he continued. And I just lay there, let him do his thing, and he came, he left. Because I got turned off. I'm thinking here, he, he just spoiled. He just spoiled the fantasy. I'm thinking, oh, this is a man of my dreams. He's black, he's he's handsome, he's hung, he got all these muscles, and he's making love to me. And like I said, we weren't even in the act. We were just kissing. We were naked and just kissing. Mm -hmm. And for him to say... I don't care about whether you come or not. It's all about me. And I just laid there and he just fucked my brains out and left. I didn't enjoy it because how can you enjoy having sex when the person just think of you as, as something to stick his dick in? Anyway, I met him at the uh, men's, Northern, uh, Northern Men's Sun. I don't like that place either, by the way, because I didn't go back. What's the other one I have here? I have, oh, this is interesting. I had the Wall Street um, sauna, or Wall Street bath. I don't think they call it the Wall the Wall Street bath. I've, they had another name for it, but it was right there on Wall Street. It was on Wall Street, uh, two or three blocks from Trinity Place. Not far from Trinity Church. It wasn't far from there. Uh, I didn't I didn't like that place. I'm gonna tell you about that place. 
I guess I could have scored, but most of the guys there were kind of old. I remember them. They were old white men, a lot of them. And I think that's why they was coming after me because I was young. I was in my 20s. And, and I, I, didn't, I didn't like that. I, they, I, the funny, funny, funny part about that, that was in 1980. That was in, I think, think the summer 1980 on Wall Street. Well, that's fall, I wound up working on Wall Street. And that kind of that kind of spooked me because I'm thinking, I used to, I, I went to this, to this bathhouse right down the block. I hope I don't run into anybody that, you know, saw me there, but I think it was the other way around. What others I have here? Uh, well, anyway, I have all these bathhouses. I mean, now, the one that I'm leaving for last, I'm going to make sure I'm going to leave this one for last. The one I'm leaving for last is called Mount Morris the Mount Morris bathhouse, which was in Harlem, which a lot of, I gather most of the black men in the city probably went to. Mount Morris bathhouse, I've been there quite a few times. And yes, pretty much is, is all black. I mean, if, if you did see a white a white guy in there, obviously you see a white guy in there, you know he's in there, you know, they get these black men. Um, but yeah, I went to Mount Morris. And if you ever read my book, I wrote a book about meeting a, uh, one of my love affairs, Raymond. And the last time I went to Mount Morris, uh, that had to be 1980. And that probably was the last bathhouse I've been to, with the exception from the 1990 when I told you about uh, Tony. But yeah, Mount Morris bathhouse. And I remember that. And, I, and that was depressing because... If you, like I said, if you read my book about Raymond, Raymond, I met Raymond back in, in the 70s and we never got together. All, all the time I had had Raymond is when I run into him on the streets or at the bars. And But Mount Morris Bathhouse was mostly well in Harlem where most of the blacks, you know, black men, black gay men hang out. First they had Mount Morris Park. You didn't have to go to the bathhouse. You can go to the park up the hill, flew around up there. But the reason why I brought all this out I'm now making this the part the part four of my 1970 gay sex bars because that was part of that was part of the gay bars sex uh, scene that was part of the scenes you had the bathhouses you had the parks you had the bars and my experience again is almost like the regular gay bars and back in the 70s if you didn't have that look or had that that equipment you didn't get um, I, you, to me, don't enjoy it that well. And I'm only saying that is because at my age, uh, I'm very lucky. And I tell uh, the gay men that I talk to now, because don't forget, I, I was that was back in the days of HIV and AIDS. And I think one of the things that saved me, it's my opinion, one of the things that saved me, the fact that I didn't have all those all that sex, like my friends were having. I mean, I can go out. I have friends that can score. Every time they get to a bar, they can score. And so I have one that scored like three or four times a day. Just go to a bar or walk the streets or whatever. I didn't have that experience. For me, it was a struggle to get laid. This is Eric. And thank you for listening to my crazy Christmas 2021.